BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of his word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be his disciples and after his death and resurrection those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now after 2,000 years Beth Goyim Messianic congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. Let's turn to the book of Vayikra, Leviticus chapter 14. Vayikra chapter 14, where this is message P081. 81 messages, uh, tape messages with the land of the Far East there in the Philippines. Parash number 28, Vayikra, Leviticus, Metzora, chapter 14, verse 1 through chapter 15, verse 33. Let's start out with uh, chapter 14, verses 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. And I said to Moshe, this is to be the law concern, concerning the person afflicted with Tisserat. On the day of his purification, he is to be brought to the Kohen. And the Kohen is to go outside the camp and examine him there. If he sees that the Tisserat sores have been healed, in the affected person, okay? Amen? So here we're, we're, we're going to be going through more health-related issues in this particular parash. Health-related issues that are uh, confirmed by, you know, science today, which is really amazing that this book was written so long ago, and people say, well, it's just a collection of stories, and, you know, it's just amazing. So here the Lord is saying that this person that's afflicted is outside the camp. The person that's afflicted, okay, he's out there for the purification so that however this leprosy gets transferred from person to person, um, as we read in last week's parash, you know, the person would cover their mouth and say, unclean, unclean. So it has to do something with breathing in the air. Okay, so if the Lord would have the man cover his mustache and his mouth, and say unclean, unclean, that means um, it would be that it has something to do with breathing in. So the person that has leprosy is outside of the city, okay? And the Kohen, the Kohenim is supposed to go outside the city to uh, take a look at this person to see if they're still sick, um, what, what's going on with them, okay? So we're going to take a little tr uh, trail here. Okay, because it's really fascinating how each puzzle piece goes together. If you go from, from the Brit Shah backwards through the prophets or through the writings and then to the Torah, it, you really begin to get a great picture. So with this type of uh, teaching, we're going forward. We're going to see something amazing. So we're going to go from the sin is outside the city and the Cohen's got to go look at the, the sin, okay? So let's take a look at something here. Let's take a look at the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 53. We're going to look at verse 4 through 8. Yes, Yahoo 53, verses 4 through 8. I'll give you a second to go get that. I'll get a glass of water here. Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 8. We're going to take a look at the sin that's out the, outside the city. Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 8, we're tying it together with uh, Viacra 14, verses 1, 2, and 3, that the person with the sin was outside the city. In fact, 
Now we're reading from Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 8. In fact, it was our diseases he bore, our pains from which he suffered, yet we regarded him as punished, stricken, and afflicted by God. But he was wounded because of our crimes and crushed because of our sins. The disciplining that makes us whole fell on him, and by his stripes we are healed. We all, like sheep, went astray. We turned each one to his own way, yet Adonai laid on him the guilt of us all. Though mistreated, he was submissive. He did not open his mouth like a lamb to be slaughtered, like a sheep silent before its shearers. He did not open his mouth. After forcible arrest and sentencing, he was taken away. And none of his gen generation protested his being cut off from the land of the living for the crimes of my people who deserve the punishment of themselves. Amen? So here, the sin goes outside the city, okay? So here, Yeshua, we know that this is about the Mashiach, okay? If you read the whole passage, you understand it's about the Mashiach. He, disease, so it says there in verse 4, disease. Now, what was outside the city in Viacra 14 was the diseased person. So Yeshua became diseases for us because it says God put our sins on him. So he became leprous for us. He became diseased for us. So he went outside the city. And then in verse 8, let's focus there for a moment. Isaiah 53, verse 8. After forcible arrest and sentencing, he was taken away. Let's, let's pause there. Now, the key here is if we look back at verse 4, it says, our diseases he bore. So he is unclean. Okay, so leprosy, tisserat, is a disease of some sort, a circulatory problem or also then a respiratory problem, too, it could be. All right, so here he became diseased for us. Now, the key to this, why we're tying it together with the, this week's parash of Leviticus 14, Leviticus 14, is look at verse 8 of chapter 53 of Isaiah. After for forcible arrest, and sentencing, he was taken away. Let's pause there. He was taken away. Where did, where did the Mashiach go? He went outside the city because you don't do crucifixions inside the city. You had to go outside the city. So here, the tying this together, he was diseased, and then he was taken outside the city. So the Kohanim would have to go outside the city to examine him. So we got two pieces of the puzzle so far. Yeshua became diseased for us. So he has the leprosy, basically the leprosy. He became leprous for us. Then it was diseases, uh, our diseases he bore and took them outside the city, outside the city, okay, with the cross. Now, why is that so important? Let's add the third piece to the puzzle. Let's add the third piece to the puzzle. Let's turn in the Bert Hanashah, the New Testament, to Mark 15, verses 29 through 32. Add the other people since they keep dropping off, it's not them, okay? Or whatever's going on over there. So add, add the other people into the call so they can experience the beauty of the Word of God. Mark 15, verses 29 through 32. Mark 15, verses 29 through 32. Mark 15, verses 29 through 32. People, people passing by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads, and saying, aha, so you can destroy the temple, can you? And rebuild it in three days? Save yourself and come down from the stake. Likewise, the head Kohanim and the Torah teachers made fun of him, saying to each other, he saved others, but he can't save himself. And so the Messiah is he, the king of Israel, let him come down now from the stake? If we see that, then we'll believe him. Even the men nailed up, nailed up uh, with him, insulted him. Let's look back at verse 31. This is a key to back that ties together with the parash. Likewise, the head Kohanim and the Torah teachers made fun of him, saying to each other, he saved others, but he can't save himself. Amen? So, where was Yeshua when they said this? And what were they looking at? They were looking at him on the cross, right? He's on the cross because it says in the verse 32 that even the other guys on the cross next to him. 
made insults. But where, where were they? Because you didn't, didn't do crucifixions inside the city. So they were outside the city. So here the Kohanim were examining Yeshua on the cross. Just like the Vayikra scripture, where the Kohanim, the Kohen, had to go outside the city to examine the leprous person. Here, the Kohanim, Yeshua became sin for us. He did nothing wrong at all. He became sin for us, as we saw in the Isaiah 53 scripture. He took the cross outside the city. He was taken away. Then the Kohanim go and examine him out on the cross. Amen? So that's pretty cool how that all goes together. Now, let's go back to Viacra 14, please. Viacra 14. We're going to now look at Leviticus 14, verses 4 through 7. Viacra 14, verses 4 through 7. Now we're going to see about all the, the health-related issues and what the Lord does. And when he puts certain things together, you go, what? But now it's important. We're going to see why. The Kohen will order that two living clean birds be taken for the one to be purified, along with the cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop leaves. The Kohen is to order one of the birds slaughtered in a clay pot over running water. As for the live bird, he is to take it with the cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop and dip them in the living, and the living bird in the blood of the bird slaughtered over running water. And sprinkle the person to be purified from the tisserat seven times. Next, he is to set the live bird free in an open field. Amen? Look at, look at verse 6. As for the live bird, he is to take it with the cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop, and dip them and the living burned the blood, and the bird and slaughtered over running water. When you're reading this, you're like, why? Why? That's like disgusting. You, know, you want this stuff, you want the, okay, I can see the cedar maybe, it smells kind of nice. Uh, the scarlet, why? And the blood, that's disgusting. You want, and then you've got to put it over the person. It's going to sprinkle the person with all this stuff. The Lord doesn't make any mistakes. It might be sometimes difficult to understand until you get the puzzle pieces. Until you get the puzzle pieces. Now remember, the Kohanim, these guys were trained. But the, they're being trained from the, as we would call it in America, the PDR, the Physician's Desk Reference. Tells you about all the drugs, what the contraindications are, and stuff like that. But here the Lord is putting these things together. Now, as we saw in last week's parash, the person's got to cover his mouth and, and say, unclean, unclean, unclean. So this tisserat has something to do with your respiratory system. Okay, you're covering your mouth saying unclean. That means that something may be coming out from inside your mouth, which is coming from your lungs. Now, the Lord said to purify the person with cedar wood. Cedar wood has a lot of stuff to help oxygenate your blood in the cedar, okay? It has an, uh, and it oxygenates your blood, and then it goes into your brain, and it goes into a part of your brain called the penile gland. And that's a part with our emotions. Now, science has proven in our modern age that when you're happy, you produce all these hormones that help to keep your body going well. When you're sad or you're stressed, you have all this stuff that brings you down. Okay? There was even a, a doctor that once did a study that... He had, he had cancer patients, and he tried to make them happy, you know, for a while they were in their end-stage cancer, and he had them watch all these comics, all these funny movies, all these things, and all of a sudden, a lot of his patients started to get better because when you're happy, you produce all these different hormones. So here, this cedar wood 
is oxygenating your blood. It's going to your part of your brain that's making your emotions go well, and you're becoming happy even though your part you you have this leprosy. Now the other part about it, which is really fascinating, is if you, if you have a problem sleeping then get into ministry. <laughs> if you have a problem sleeping, they say, it says, put the cedar wood on your nose. And I did it last night. And I slept great. I didn't move the whole night long. Okay. And it helps you to go into a deep sleep. So if you have this leprosy, you might be stressed out. You might not be able to sleep well. So the Lord is saying, dip this and sprinkle it on the person. Now, it also then says, Use hyssop. Hyssop is an ancient medicine from God, and it, it cures 99 different diseases. Let me say that again. 99 different diseases. So the Lord is saying, take this cedar wood, this, this um, hyssop, and sprinkling it on the person. So, so here the Lord is sprinkling this medicine on you, He's got the hyssop that's going to clean up 99 different infections, okay? And it's helpful to remedy 99 different diseases. Now, the other weird part, the scarlet yarn. The scarlet yarn. What is the deal with the scarlet yarn? I'm like, Lord, I, I, I just don't understand that one. But the scarlet yarn comes from this little bug, little, little bug called... A, let me find it here, a crimson worm, okay? And what it does is this, this little bug uh, attaches itself to a tree. And it's, it's, a, it's a mother bug, and it's a crimson color, and it secretes this, this gel that's on the bug to make like a cocoon. And it, that cocoon is so that the babies can go into the tree and that the babies of this animal survive. And there's n numerous, numerous, numerous of this crimson worm. But when the bug dies, the shell stays there and the goo stays there. So what the, they would do is take this bug and mix it with the silk to make it become scarlet. But this, this bug is this goo is helping to make a medicine, this dye from this crimson worm. So the Lord is having us use this um, sandalwood or the cedar wood, which is also in olive oil. And since it's a skin disease for the leprosy, the olive oil, if you put the olive oil on your skin, it will protect you from the sun's rays and cancer, but because if you have a cut or a scab, that area is going to be affected by the sun, and then you can get cancer. So here, here the Lord is saying, here is this amazing medicine for somebody that I'm going to be healing with the leprosy. Amen? All right, that was pretty cool, I think. Now let's move on to Vayikra 14, verse 8. 14, verse 8. He used to be purified, must wash his clothes, shave off all his hair and bathe himself in water. Then he will be clean. And after that, he may enter the camp. He must live outside his tent for seven days. So the Lord is saying that if you have this leprosy and you've been cleared of it, you now have to shave off all your hair, all your beard, all your mustache, everything. Okay. Now let, let's look at verse 9. It'll give us a little bit more. On the seven days to shave off all his hair, off his head, also his beard and eyebrows. And he must shave off all his hair and he has to wash his clothes and bathe his body in water and he will be clean. Okay? So here, it's saying you've got to shave off your beard, that means every man in Israel is to have a beard like this. I know nowadays it confuses a lot of Gentiles who are coming into the Messianic way of walking the true path and they see Jews that don't have a beard, God says, don't cut your beard, period. Okay? That's what he said. So here, it's even confirming it with the leprosy that the person that 
is coming back, has to shave off their eyebrows. That's going to look funny. Your, your hair and your beard. You know, first of all, you know, you got this beard and everybody's always seen you with a beard from, the, you know, your whole life or your adult life. And then now you're coming back. And so it's going to be, you're going to stand out in a big way, an older person having no facial hair, no eyebrows. So the Lord is saying, so here, this is a testimony. You can say, the Lord healed me of the tisserat. Okay, now let's look at Leviticus 14, verse 14. Viacra 14, verse 14. The Kohen is to take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the tip of the right ear of the person being purified, the right thumb of his right hand, and his right big toe. Amen? You're like, why am I putting this blood of the purification... Why am I putting it on the right ear, the right thumb, and the right big toe? That sounds kind of weird, Lord. Uh, you know, I just don't under understand what you're talking about here. It sounds very weird to be putting this blood of the purification on the right ear, the right thumb, and the right big toe. Well, when you study the Lord's anatomy and physiology, you understand something very interesting, that this right ear, your right thumb, this, 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 uh, here, if you have a pulse here, and it goes right, right to your heart. This goes right back to your heart. Your right thumb goes right back, right through here, right through there, right into your heart. So the Lord is saying here, take this medicine and put it on the whole right side where there are insertion points where the medicine will be taken right back to the person's heart, right back to that person's heart. So here, the Lord is healing you. He wants to take this medicine right back to your body, right into your circulatory system, so you can go and do more. Now, why is that important for the right thumb, the right of the right hand, the right ear, and the right big toe? Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. Matthew 25, verses 31 through through 46. Matthew 25, verse 31 through 46. Matthew 25, verse 31 through 46. Now, you're going to see something really pretty fascinating here. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, accompanied by all the angels, He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. The sheep he will place at his right hand, and the goats on his left. And the king will say to those on his right, Come, you, you who my father has blessed, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you from the founding of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me uh, something to drink. I was a stranger, and you made me... Uh, you made me your guest. I need clothes and you provided them. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And the people who have done what God wants will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you, a stranger, make you a guest who need clothes to provide them? When did we see you sick and in prison and visit, prison and visit you? The king will say to them, yes, I tell you that whenever you did these things for the least important of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. Then he will also speak to those on his left saying, get away from me, you who are cursed. Go off into the fire prepared for the adversary and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. Thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. A stranger, and you did not welcome me. Needing clothes, and you did not give them to me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they too will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, a stranger, needing clothes, sick or in prison, and not take care of you? And he will answer them, Yes, I tell you that whenever you refuse to do it for the least, whenever you refuse to do it for the least important of these people, you refuse to do it for me, then they will go off to eternal punishment. But those who have done what God wants will go to eternal life. Look back at verse 33. The sheep 
he will place at his right hand and the ghost at his left. The right side is for that medicine. Yeshua is that medicine. He sits at the right hand of the Father. The right hand of the sheep of the pe ones that are going to be going with him. Okay? So here you tie together this leprous, where the Lord heals you of this leprous way of being. He comes outside the city to meet you because he's a Kohen on the order of Melchizedek. And he comes outside to meet you, to heal you, if you're willing to do what God wants. Because that's where the passage goes here in Matthew. Those who did what my father wanted. Okay? Uh, let's see here. All right, let's do, um, let's go back to Vayikra 14, verse uh, 15 and 16. Vayikra 14, verse 15 and 16. By Leviticus 14, verse 15 and 16. Next to Cohen is to take some of the two third pint of olive oil and pour it onto the palm of his left hand and dip his right finger in the oil that is left hand and sprinkle from the oil with his finger seven times before Adonai. So here the Cohen is putting this oil in his left hand but then he's dipping his right finger into the oil. So he's allowing that oil to be sprinkled, okay? The olive oil, as I said earlier, is good for your skin. It blocks, especially you go to Israel, um, it, the sun is very, very strong there, okay? So here, if you're having this leprosy, and you're sprinkling it before the Lord for this person, you're helping them to get these nutrients into their body because it has a lot of aloe in it. Okay, the extra olive oil has, uh, will help you against the, the uh, UV exposure. Okay, so if you've been, had the sickness, you've had the skin disease, it's very important to cover that skin so that you don't get these other things into your body. All right, um, let's see here. All right, let's, uh, let's move on a little bit. Um, let's move on to um, Biacra 14, verses uh, 33 through 35. Biacra 14, verses 33 through 35. Okay, we're done with the people at the moment. Okay, with the, with the leprosy, we're now moving on to a, what happens if the house has leprosy? How does a house have leprosy? Okay, so you're seeing a, a pattern that the leprosy is a, is, a, is a whole topic type of thing. Okay, verses 33 to 35, Adonai said to Moshe and Aaron, when you have entered the land of the Kenah, which I am giving you as a possession, and I put, uh, put an infection of Tisserat in a house, in the land that you possess, then the owner of the house is to come to the Kohen. It seems to me that there may be an infection in the house. Amen? So here, the Lord is going to give us now criteria of if we come into a house, basically that has mold or some sort of mold spores growing in it. It's going to have different colors. It's going to either be black, red, or green. Okay? So the Lord is saying, well, when you see that, go to the Kohen because I've trained him and now you're going to do a certain things about what you should do if you come into a house that has molding. Uh, not, not molding, mold, okay? But it says there in 34 that the Lord put that infection in the house, okay? Look at verse 36 through 38. The Kohen is to order the house empty before he goes in to inspect the infection so that everything in the house won't be made unclean afterwards. The Cohen is to enter the, and inspect the house. He will examine the infection and if he sees that the infection is in the walls of the house with greenish or reddish depressions that seem to go deeper than the surface of the wall, he's to go out of the house to its door and seal the house for seven days. Amen? So here, the Cohen, how can the Cohen go in 
to the house. Won't he get sick? No, because the Kohen is supposed to be anointed with the anointing oils. Okay? So here, if you're going to a prayer service and you're going to be praying over a lot of people, you're going to be laying hands on people, you should definitely use anointing oil on your hands because it's going to, be, it's going to uh, put a barrier between you and what you're coming into, whether it be airborne, you want to put some stuff on your face, on your nose, the anointing oils, I highly recommend if you're doing the, that type of stuff, frankincense and myrrh. Okay? So here, you want to go, the Cohen's going into the house, and he's inspecting it, and he's seeing greenish and reddish depressions. That's some serious mold going on in the house. So basically what they're going to do is shut the house up. Why, why shut it up? Because if you take the light away from the mold, the mold will die. It needs light, okay, and it needs moisture. So the Lord is saying, shut up that house, and then let go away from it for seven days, okay? Uh, so through this section of chapter 14, we, I don't want to go through the whole thing right now because I want to get to some of the other things in chapter 15. It tells you step by step what you should do about scraping the walls, taking the mold off, and then also what basically the hyssop and the, the, um, the cedar uh, wood, the cedar, and then the, the, um, the, uh, the scarlet is to clean the house. So if you ever have something like that going on in your house, come back to chapter 14, do what God says, and it will clean your house. Now let's go to um, chapter 15. Chapter 15, verses 1 through 3. Chapter 15, verses 1, 2, and 3. Adonai said to Moshe and Aaron, Tell the people of Israel when any man has a discharge from his body, the discharge is unclean. The discharge is unclean no matter whether it contain, continues flowing or stopped. It is still his uncleanness. Okay? So here, this discharge is something that's not normal coming out of your body. Okay? If you got some discharge, you know, some goo coming out of your skin, well, that could be leprous. Okay? Well, that's a different examination. But let's say, you know, you got some uh, stuff coming out of your nose. Okay? Or you got some stuff coming out of the lower part of your body. Um, you have diarrhea or something like that. The Lord is saying, you're unclean until evening. Separate yourself so that disease can stay just with you and it's not passed along to other people. So it stays in uncleanness until evening. Okay? Let's see here. Look at verse um, 11 and 12. If a person with the discharge fails to rinse his hands in water before touching someone, that person is to wash his clothes and bathe himself in water he will be unclean until evening. If the person with the discharge touches a clay pot, he must, it must be broken. If he touches a wooden utensil, it must be rinsed in water. Amen? Why? The person, if you're having that discharge, this is what, it just says wash in water. Remember, in the Brit Hadashah in the New Testament, the, the Pharisees say to Yeshua, well, you, you know, you don't wash your hands like the elders. You know, there was this whole thing that they said to do. But here, right here in Leviticus, it just says, wash your hands in water. Okay? So if you came back from the city, and you're with a lot of people and stuff like that, and you're shaking hands, the Lord says, wash your hands, as we are to do today. Okay? But if you fail to wash your hands, okay, then you'll be unclean until evening, if you've had this discharge, if you touch somebody that had a discharge of something, you need to not spread it. So the Lord is using this great book for health things not to spread disease. Okay? The clay pot we've spoken about in earlier parash readings. The reason you break the clay pot if you had the discharge because the clay pot is porous. The disease will go into the pores in the clay pot. Okay? Um... Let's see here. Let's go down to um, verse 16 and 17. 
verse 16 and 17, Leviticus 15, verse 16 and 17. If a man has a seminal omission, he is to bathe his entire body in the water. He will be unclean until evening. And anything or and cloth any clothing or leather in which there is any semen is to be washed off with water. It will be unclean until evening. So it's very important to understand this that one, that's why we recommend for married couples, Friday sundown until Saturday sundown, that's given to the Lord. Why? No marital relations. Why? Because the Lord said you're not to come to congregation if you've had relations because you're unclean until evening. So if you had marital relations on Friday evening sundown, you will not be clean until Saturday evening sundown. Okay, the Lord does not want that uh, person in congregation. But why is that important to understand? We're going to see in another part of an error that the Pharisees did with Yeshua. Turn to John 8. John 8. John 8. We're going to look at verse 1 through 5. John 8. Verse 1 through 5. John 8, Yochanan 8, verse 1 through 5. But Yeshua went to the Mount of Olives. At daybreak he appeared again in the temple court where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The Torah teachers in the Pirashim brought a woman who had been caught committing adultery and made her stand in the center of the group. Then they said to him, Rabbi, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the Torah of Moshe, Torah, Moshe commanded that such a woman be stoned to death. What do you say about it? Amen? Now, there was another part in, in the Vayikra scripture where it says the woman, too, if, she, if the married man and woman had relation, they're both unclean until evening. You see that they bring a woman who was caught in the act of adultery. They bring her to the temple where Yeshua was in the court of the women. Every person who touched that woman, by Torah standards, they are unclean because they touched the woman who had had marital relations. Okay? So they were unclean also. They should not have even brought the woman because she was unclean until evening. And it says there in verse 2, at daybreak. So she's still unclean until nighttime. So they were breaking all sorts of rules because they wanted to try to trap Yeshua because they were not Torah scholars themselves. They thought they were, but they're trying to break the rules. So everybody who touched her, because she had marital relations, okay, is unclean. And they brought her to a place that was clean, which is now unclean because the Lord said it was unclean. All right, um, let's see here. Let's just add one little part here. Let's go to one last uh, scripture. Let's go back to Viacra 15, verse 28. Viacra 15, verse 28. If she has become free of her discharge, she is to count seven days after that she will be clean. This is talking about a woman who is having her her monthly uh, uh, menstrual cycle. She is having a discharge. Once she is done with her discharge, she is to count seven days, and then she is clean. The reason being, and that with God's wisdom, it's so amazing because God designed us. You, you, Jehovah designed us that the woman generally has a period anywhere between five and seven days. Okay, so that's the. The, the uterus releasing the blood because she had not become pregnant from her uterus. Okay, but now another egg is beginning to uh, start to come to the ovary. So the seven days that she's unclean, there's another egg getting ready. Then there's another seven days where then the egg would then be coming down after that, after the time of the blood being discharged. And then that is a perfect time for husband and wife to become mar uh, have marital relations and the egg to become fertilized. So you have the seven days of the menstrual cycle, seven days of uncleanness, 
and then boom, God wants us to have children. Okay, so 14 days without marital relations, then you're going to have relations. So that was a quick overview because of uh, our internet problems that seem to be now fixed. All right, and thank you very much. And this has been a wonderful blessing. Amen and amen. Shalom, this is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And click on the Donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnant's Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture. Truly, the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially News from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close this Shabbat together with the reading of the New Week's parasha, That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, 
many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and Biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the Tri-State area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, Yeshua. Shalom.